Let's see this interesting question. So we want to solve for x. We have 2 raised by 9, the 9 raised by x divided by a raised by 3, 3 raised by x equals 1 over 4. So first, probably we want to change all the bases to be the same, right? So allow me to copy and paste. So we want to change the number 8 to be 2 raised by 3. And uh, 1 over 4, let's change 1 over 4 first. 1 over 4 is 4 raised by i, negative 1, right? And the 4 is 2 squared. So 2 raised by square, then raised by negative 1, that's 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So 1 over 4, we can, can be written as a 2 raised by negative 2. So similarly, this 8 is 2 raised by 3. Then we have 3 layers multiplied by, so 3 times 3 raised by x. So let's do this. So we have a 2 raised by 3 times 3 raised by x. Now the basis are the same. Remember, when we do division of the same base, we subtract the exponents. So we can change, we can combine those two bases to be one base, right? Nine raised by x minus three times three raised by x. Now, both sides have the base two. So that means we can ignore the base. We have equation, the basis are the same, the force is the numerator, the force is the exponents to be the same. So we can forget about this base, right? So I have nine raised by x minus three times three raised by x equals to negative two. And so I have this. Now we want to move negative two to the other side, right? Negative we'll add two on both sides. So it becomes plus two equals to zero. Now let's look at nine. Nine, let me allow me to copy and paste. So you have to leave some crucial steps here. So nine is a three squared, right? So that means I can read, I can rewrite. 9 raised by x to be 3 raised by 2 times x. Or I can even write this as 3x raised by squared. Right? In this way, I see I have something quadratic. Think about 3 raised by x to be y. So I have a y squared minus 3y plus 2. And this is effectable. We can factor this into two factors. We can factor as 3 raised by x minus 1 as one factor, then 3 raised by x minus 2. All right, let's check. So 3 raised by x times 3 raised by x, that's 3 raised by x squared, which is 9 raised by x. Then we have negative one times three x. We have a three x times negative two. So negative one plus negative two, that's negative three times three raised by x. That's our middle term. Then negative one times negative two, that's positive two. All right, so this, then we have a factor to be zero by zero property. is saying each one can be zero. All right. We don't really need a parenthesis for this anymore. Because only when we want to show that's in the factored form, what's wrong? We keep them in the parentheses. Okay, this one doesn't want me to get rid of the parentheses. Okay, let's keep it there. So then solve these two equations. What do we have? We have, we have three minus one equals zero. So we add one on both sides. We have three equals to one. And this one we have three raised by x equals to two, right? 
So these two equations equals two, not zero. Okay, three raised by x equals one can be written as three raised by x equals to one, one we can think as a three raised by zero. Right, anything raised by zero power, the base is the same, that forces x to be zero. So one solution. So one solution is x equals to zero. Well, let's check. If x is zero, nine raised by zero is one. So we have two raised by one. Then three raised by zero is one. Then two raised by one. Uh, eight raised by one. Or two divided by eight, indeed, that's a quote. So that's one solution. Now let's see the second solution. Second solution comes from three raised by x equals two. So we need to use logarithmic to solve this. So we take our n on both sides. We take our n on both sides. Then by the property of logarithmic, the, the exponent of x come, can be pulled to the, in front of our n three. Now we divide by our n3 on both sides. We get x equals, oops, x equals, equals to our n2 divided by our n3. Well, our n2 is ir irrational number. Our n3 is an irrational number. Irrational number divided by irrational number is irrational number. And we can approximate by punching to calculate it, but we would rather leave in this form. So the second solution is x equals to ln divided by ln3. All right. So we have two solutions, zero and uh, ln2 divided by ln3. So I would uh, you know, suggest you to check, All right? Put x equals to ln and two divided by ln three to see if the equation holds. So it's an interesting question. 